Hello everyone, I'm Tiara Chardé. I am back with a special video. Um, shout outs to everyone who voted on which video you would like, either a meditation or me reading some of the book to you. And, um, you know, we're reading some of the books. So tap in, um, welcome back. Hey, hey, if you're new, Again, I'm T. Eva Chardet. I'm a spiritual mentor, certified master life coach, ordained minister, priestess, oracle, author, right? And CEO and founder of the Embodying the Goddess Transformation Program, as well as the Pussy Portal Program, which starts February 22nd. Okay, so a little backstory before we get into this masterpiece, okay? So some people were asking me, like, how did you get to be on such an amazing book project. It was literally me stepping out of my own way and shining my light, right? So one of the women um, who compiled the book, Danielle, she and I had been social media friends for a while when I was living in Costa Rica. Many of you know, I lived in Costa Rica for two years. I underwent a drastic life change and a part of my purpose was to broadcast and to test to testify, really share my testimony with the world. And Danielle saw me throughout, throughout the years and um, on social media. And she invited me to be a part of this anthology titled Ancient Future Unity, Reclaim Your Roots, Liberate Your Lineage, and Live a Legacy of Love. And I am in love with the title. I'm in love with the artwork. It is just a gorgeous book. Like it's, it's gorgeous. So, um, shout outs to the author, authors, shout outs to the artists, everyone who had a hand in creating this, the publishing company, the teams, everybody. Shout outs to all of you because we created herstory and it is profound and it's beautiful. So that's how I came about on the project. So it's like I was saying in the previous messages, shine your light, step into the spotlight. You do not know how many people are looking for you or maybe you do and that's why you're hiding. But it's time for you to put the spotlight on yourself um, and let people see you, let them hear you and where you co you've come from and what you've learned thus far. It's very important and I've received so many opportunities over the years that don't even really make sense. They're like miraculous opportunities. And it's because I decided to take a leap of faith and follow the divine's call on my life, really submit and surrender to my purpose. And here we are. All right. So if you have a copy of the book, you can open up with me. We're on page 239, 239. That's where my chapter starts. Um, and anyone who's interested in purchasing the book from Amazon, that is linked in the description box. If you would like a personalized autographed copy from me, that information to get one is also in the description box, okay? So let's get into it, page 239. And my chapter is called The Pussy Portal, Healing with Pleasure, okay? Whew, let's get into it. I already feel the vibes, okay? All right. I want to dance like a wild woman. I want to sway and grind and twirl. I want to feel the wind blow through my kinky, curly mane. I want the sun and moon to make love to my smooth, dark skin. I will bring pleasure to what was once pain. I choose to heal in ecstasy. I am often asked, how can black women heal from everything that we've been through and finally be free? My answer is, You'll be free when you honor what's been hidden, pushed down, and held back. Freedom is yours when you reclaim what has been stolen from you, specifically your magic, femininity, divinity, and sensuality. 
I didn't always want to display the expanse of all that I am and neon lights for all of the world to see. I had gotten so used to having to hide my magic, heartbreakingly afraid to be big. Yet there was a very large, creative, and sensitive goddess stirring deep down inside, and I was overwhelmed at the idea of embodying such a being. The journey of setting her myself free is a complicated one. Yes, it's personal and private, but also not unfamiliar to most black women. This tale is not just my own. Housed within me are stories that speak of perseverance and triumph, as well as stories that carry the pain and trauma of the ancestors who have called me into this physical reality. I am aware now more than ever of their prayers for redemption. Their story tied to my own is yearning to be birthed into this world through me. I speak for them now. I speak for us. Ooh. Arlene Williams, my mother, was tall, beautiful, round, and soft. And all I wanted as a child was to be next to her. The strong black woman role was one that she had mastered, having had a full-time career and sole ownership of a successful business in our city. She would leave her place of work and head straight to her store to greet the evening crowd. I would bounce off the bus, cross the street with my dad, and hang out in the back room of the store until closing. My mother's hair was always curled just so and had a nice gleam to it from the lustrous pink oil sheen spray she applied in the mornings. She loved Chanel Number no. 5 perfume and nothing but 100% real gold jewelry adorned her ears, wrists, neck, and fingers. And there she sat, every bit the big and beautiful queen on a very high wooden stool behind the counter of one of the most successful liquor stores in an oftentimes violent inner city. I would sometimes sneak behind the counter and climb up on her throne. I'd pretend to ring out customers with a bright smile and a chipper, have a great day. I imagined myself having conversations with the people who came in like she did. I always saw her congratulating someone on something or other, or I'd sneak around the thick, heavy curtain that separated the store from the back room and watch as she gently, humorously, yet firmly admonished some man and inviting him to change his life around. She would minister to the people who patronized her store, and she would mourn when one of them fell victim to the streets. One night, my mother spoke of a dream she had of a customer coming in to rob her, and she had shot him right between the eyes. That same man came into the store the very next day, and greatly disturbed, she told him the details of her weird dream. The man looked petrified, as mom relayed the dream to him and he quickly left the store without his usual purchase. Mm. My mother was never robbed in all her years of owning the liquor store. Everyone respected her and they would marvel at the fact that all of the liquor stores in their surrounding areas would regularly be robbed, but not my mother's. If people only knew that she kept a small Bible in her purse, yet had her right hand sporting two inch long natural nails painted with exactly two clear coats of Sally Hansen's hard as nails, under the liquor store counter clutching the prettiest nine millimeter chrome handgun you've ever seen, while she rung up customers with her left hand dripping in gold link bracelets. She was a firm believer in the peace that passes all understanding, as well as the peace that she never left the house without. I adored her. 
My mother, like so many of our black matriarchs, held a trove of family secrets. Shh, don't tell, don't talk about it. The family image, what the people thought, all mattered in the black matriarch's generation. She held onto and protected family secrets that didn't even belong to her. And if the secrets of her family couldn't be exposed and healed, she made sure she protected those who desperately needed a hero, a champion. Her experiences had shown her the ways of the world and what horrors could befall women and children. So she dedicated her life to social work as a supervisor in an inner city for over 32 years. At 42 years young, my mother didn't really have time for a brand new baby girl, especially one so sensitive, clingy, and naturally connected to the spiritual realm. She was determined to shield me from the hands of an unkind world, yet she always made sure that I was aware of the potential dangers. I would stare up at her in wide-eyed horror when she came home and relayed some of the experiences of the children she worked with. So many of them were either used, abused, molested, murdered, or snatched from their homes and whose fate would ultimately fall under the care of my mother and the decisions of the state of Connecticut. I would never meet these children, but I would stay up late at night with tears in my eyes, praying for each and every one of them. I decided that my mother was right. This world was way too scary for me. And so I buried deep within myself for safety. She was very protective of me, her baby girl. However, in her protectiveness, she had stunted me. Life was close to magical when there was love and celebration like during the holidays. It was the times in between that were challenging for me to navigate. I always felt that something wasn't right. I felt that there was more to life, that I was meant to do something, but what? And how, I'm just a kid. I grew up sheltered and suppressed in a home with unresolved cycles of abuse, trauma, and the band-aid that is oftentimes called Christianity. Due to these experiences, I felt that a family who hides behind Jesus can never really access the courage it takes to dive deep enough for healing to take place. In my family, religion became an inherited and unwelcome silencer which kept the family suppressed, emotionally distant, and angry. I want to be more than I am now. I want to meet the woman I am meant to be. I want to embody all that I am. So my loves, there's so much more to my story here. That's all I will be sharing with you right now. Um, but there's so much more to my story about um, how I was able to navigate the information coming into me, my environment, my family dynamic, how I discovered the pussy portal healing with pleasure. I discovered that in childhood, okay? That intel, that awareness was birthed in me in childhood and I map it out in the rest of this chapter, okay? Um, what happened to me, what I went through, how I made the transition to another country, what did I learn and what brought me here? Why am I talking about the pussy portal? Why am I telling people to heal with pleasure? Why am I asking you to take a journey down self-pleasure in order to heal generational cycles of trauma, abuse, neglect, abandonment, okay? How to manifest money and prosperity through tapping into pleasure okay and yes we use pleasure in order to heal sexual abuse and trauma as well there's a method to it and i go into that into the pussy portal program in the pussy portal program it's for 12 weeks with me and your cosmic sisters and we go through six modules all the way from what is the pussy portal how to tap in 
down to activating your spiritual gifts, right? Because you're a priestess, you're called. How to um, venerate your ancestors, how to liberate them while in the pussy portal, right? How to release them. I also share in the book how the pleasure was able to help liberate my bloodline how I was able to do that at all. So that is in here. And again, in the Pussy Portal, I give you my exact steps to what it took for me to be the priestess, to be the oracle, to trust the information coming in, to trust the guidance coming from my maternal bloodline and my paternal bloodline. And in writing this, y'all, so many things happened within my life and in my family. Um, people started speaking up within the family, liberating themselves, not just in my family, but in other families, other people who have, you know, been in contact with my story and um, my teaching and my services. They also took that and they went into their own family and addressed things. They took the information found in the Pussy Portal program and they received awards on their job. They received more recognition. They received more love, more business. It's really tied and that's why I say, you know, healing the sexual shame and trauma is literally like the last step to embodying all that you are. It's literally the last hurdle that the priestess, the oracle, the goddess, and my shaman, my priest, my brothers out there, it's literally the last hurdle you need to hop over and address in order to embody the god, in order to embody the goddess. So I hope that resonated with you. I hope you liked it. Again, if you would like a copy of the book, make sure you click on the links in the description box. I'm also sending out autographed copies. If you feel aligned with me, my message, my story, my work, make sure you click on the esoteric shop so you could tap into the Pussy Portal program. We start February 22nd. I'm so excited. I'll see you all in the next message and thank you so much so much for bearing witness and listening to my story. I love y'all. Peace and love.